The chapters in Why I Trust the Bible are arranged chronologically. And because of that, I had to start with what I think is one of the oddest charges against the Bible, and that is the issue of Jesus' mythicism and the historical Jesus. Jesus' mythicism says that Jesus never existed as a real historical person. Christianity is the result of a lot of ideas that someone put together in this mythical person that we call Jesus. And they will often say, well, there's no historical proof that Jesus actually existed. And that's simply not true. Josephus uh, was a first century Jewish historian. He was not a Christian. He makes two clear allusions or statements about Jesus. Uh, Jesus is mentioned in four Roman writers. He's mentioned in two Greek writers. He's even mentioned in Jewish literature. Now, they don't like him, but the fact that they even talk about him shows that they knew that he existed. And frankly, you can use the New Testament as a proof that Jesus actually existed. Some, some people say, well, you can't use the New Testament to prove the New Testament. But you cannot explain the meteoric rise of Christianity unless there was an historical person that the early church believed died and was raised from the dead and the tomb is now empty. You cannot explain Christianity without an historical person. But as we're talking about the historical Jesus discussion, I need to also mention something called oral tradition and the telephone game. You probably know the telephone game. A bunch of people line up in a row. Person one says something to person two. Two repeats it to three. You get to 15. And when 15 says what he hears, it's something like what person one said. Okay. Well, there was a time gap between the actions of Jesus and when they were written down. We don't know how long, but let's just say 30 years, maybe even 40 years. And the stories about Jesus were passed on orally at that time. And the charge is that memory is faulty, that memory leaks, that you can't trust when things are passed on orally. And just like the telephone game shows that memory can't be trusted, so also we can't trust that the biblical writers got it right. And what I'm going to talk about in this chapter is that there really is no comparison between the telephone game and the whole issue of oral tradition. Uh, first of all, the human mind is capable of memorizing so much more than we think. We live in my country in a non-oral culture. We write things down. But in an oral culture where things are transmitted orally, memory is incredibly valuable. Uh, we believe that Jewish rabbis, some of them memorized the entire Hebrew Old Testament. Uh, we know that Greek uh, school children memorized the entire Iliad and Odyssey. It's over 200,000 words. So first of all, the human memory is much more powerful than someone in my culture gives it credit. So in other words, if you were in the first century Jewish culture, person 15 would be able to repeat exactly what person one said. But there's a, the comparison is faulty at other points too. In the telephone game, it's only one to one to one to one, and there's no controls along the way. But what we have in the Bible is social memory. We have groups of people memorizing, repeating, correcting one another. No, that's not how it happened. I was there, this is what happened. And so you have this whole thing of social memory and among many other arguments, remember too that the Christians have everything at stake. The telephone game has nothing at stake. If the, if the 15th person has no consequences of not knowing what person one says, what's the big deal? But when you're a Christian, when you're suffering for your faith, when your books are being confiscated, when you're being killed because you're a Christian, you really want to make sure that you know the message of Jesus Christ. And when something's at stake, memory is much better.